Let's all get a hymn this morning and turn together to hymn number 228. Let's stand together and sing. Hymn 228. like a good song to get you in a good mood of worship, a good mood of starting out, and a good mood of of just the Spirit of the Lord. And I appreciate that this morning. Footsteps of Jesus. What a blessing. A real blessing to be in God's house this morning. Be able to see my brothers and sisters and uh, realize everybody's doing pretty good. They're smiling on their face and uh here and uh, we just praise the Lord for that. Asking this morning for anybody got a prayer request or something you like to mention, maybe a praise report this morning as we go to prayer. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, I, I'm really thankful and I like how God's Word works. We can be out and about, we can be working, we can be uh, moving around or, or you know doing our uh, whatever we need to be doing during the week and God can work in our heart and I believe sometimes with me anyway while I'm working is a good time for him to, I'm using my hands and I'm working but he uses my mind somewhat sometimes and, and brings things to remembrance and I'm thankful for that something kind of clicked this week something I hadn't really thought about a whole lot uh, but in John chapter 1 and verse 1, a very familiar scripture, the end of the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life 
was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was, a, it goes on to say that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So thinking about that and thinking about the word over in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And I thought about that a lot in times past and blessing to my heart the same today and yesterday and forever. But then uh, I thought about him as he is the word. And what that means uh, further and more intense, I guess you might say, that his word we know it stands forever. The uh, Heaven and earth will pass away, but not his word. But I thought about his word and how it stands and, and uh, the different passages and the things that we think about in his word. Uh, first of all, in the beginning, God. That will stand forever. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his power and he... Uh, stood on nothing and, and spoke the world's into existence and created man, created the, the herb-bearing tree and all those things that he did, that'll stand. It's his word. It's the, his power. And the word is Jesus Christ. And uh, yesterday, today, and forever, and that just blessed my heart this week to think about uh, how great and how a large of a scope that is that God's word stands now we're going through our life and we're doing the things we're doing and we're coming up against the obstacles that we do and the devil throws this uh stumbling block here and he'll do this thing here and this thing here but there's god's word the same and when we need it it's right there i mean we don't have to search for it we don't have to go somewhere in a dusty warehouse somewhere and uncovered and and uh uh, get some crowbars and take it out of the, its case, but no, it's near and it's in our heart. And it's there forever. It stands. Yesterday, today, and forever. I thought about some of those key verses uh, that we think about. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. How many times have you found comfort in that? How many times have you realized and understood that that's the same today as it was when he spoke it. And that's the same today as it was uh, all those years ago. And next week when we have another problem and we need to bring that heavy burden to him, it'll be the same then too. Next year it'll be the same. Next decade, next century, forever and ever more, it stands. John 6 and 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. That's his word. That's true when we've been in a little bit of trouble. You know, when we, when we messed up just a little bit. That's true next week when I mess up big time like I probably will. That's true every time I come to him with a humble heart, with a repentant heart, yesterday, today, and forever, he will in no wise cast me out. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's true, just as true as it was the day he said it. I believe that this morning. He's preparing a place. He's getting it ready. His word stands forever. It's true. Oh, what comfort we can have. You think about the things that man does. Man will build something or he'll raise up some kind of a, uh, you know, theology or most any kind of other thing that man does. And pretty soon, pretty soon it starts to corrupt and, and starts to mess up and starts to crumble. And, and pretty soon you can't tell where it was. There's lots and lots of companies went, you know, went belly up. 
There's lots and lots of things that man has done, but God's Word. That's what we can depend on this morning. I'm glad we can depend on it so much to, in that He is the Word. Jesus, we can receive Him into our heart. That way we've got the Word in our heart. We've got forgiveness in our heart. We've got all those things we need. And it stands forever. It's settled in heaven. Praise His name this morning. That's crispy with dismissals. Let's all get a hymnal this morning and turn together to hymn number 281. Hymn 281, let's stand together and sing today. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be in the Lord's house, aren't you? Amen. It's just wonderful to know Him. Praise the Lord. Boy, that was a good selection for a call to worship, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. We welcome you to Bethany. It's certainly good to see you. It's good to be in the Lord's house this this morning. And uh, we just praise the Lord. I want to pray and ask the Lord to continue helping us. We had a wonderful uh, opening, our opening this morning, and and uh, giving us some things that are that's going to that's going to stick around. Amen. The same yesterday and day and forever, and His words not changing. And I praise the Lord for that. And had some good comments in our Sunday school class. 
And I was thinking if, uh, if our teacher had my notes, I believe he could just go ahead and preach the sermon. Amen. <laughs> He's talking about seeing Jesus in Joseph. Amen. And he said, God has a plan for all of our lives. I, I'm going to try to preach on the will of God. And I thought, boy, this, this is good. Uh, I've got my notes, brother. If you want to just try it, I'll sit down. <laughs> well, let's pray this morning. Maybe there's a special, special request to mention for prayer. Appreciate the prayer. Again, we welcome you to the service. Had uh, 30 th 33, our Sunday school. And I was thinking that song, and uh, I grew up with that song. Amen. Many of you did, probably likewise. I was thinking about my mom, dad, and many of the, the saints that, uh, that I knew was a part of our church growing up. Uh, they sang that song, and uh, we rejoiced in it. But many of them, it's a reality to them, they're treading the streets of gold, aren't they? Amen, amen. And uh, I got to thinking about that. Uh, walking on gold, that's going to be kind of exciting to finish self, isn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord, that's wonderful. You see, you believe that? Much as I believe I'm standing here, I do. And uh, when we all get to heaven, be a day of rejoicing, won't it? I'm happy in the Lord this morning, and I thank the Lord for it. Uh, I was thinking, and maybe, and there is situations that we're praying about. In fact, know of people maybe had tests, waiting for the results, and so forth, and other things. And I was thinking, the Lord may come back before the results is ever given. Amen. <laughs> and if He does, all that'll be cleared up for sure, won't it? Amen. Always excited about the children's church. And I'm going to ask Brian to come. I was thinking like you was thinking. I was just thinking, boy, when we all get to heaven, and you use your imagination sometimes, but I could see this morning Gay and Charlie and maybe Leo and Maggie, Judy, all these that went on I know and loved, they're hanging over the banister of heaven, uh, joining in and singing with us this morning when we all get to heaven. Wouldn't that be good? I know God's going to wipe away every tear, but maybe he can let him, let him share in some of our joys. I don't know. But thank God we're in church this morning, right? All right, this morning in the book of Psalms, we're going to stay in Psalms this morning. The Bible says in uh, chapter number 66, verse number 5, Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing uh, toward the children of men. And I know that David here, or the psalmist, was talking about uh, Israelite children in this passage and how that you know he'd opened the Red Sea and they'd walked on dry ground and all that. But I want you to think on this this morning. This morning, I want you to come and see this morning. I want you to think about yourself for just a minute. Your body's made up of cells. And each one of those cells, there takes 250 of those cells. You see that period up there behind men? It takes 250 of those cells to make that big enough to make a dot. Within that uh, cell, each cell, there's 200 uh, clioplasms. 200 of them that making food and energy, energy in you. There's 200 mitochondrians. Uh, in each one of those, and that's one fiftieth the size of that, one five fifty thousand of that size of that dot. And inside of that, there's hundreds of little spheres of the, in that mitochondrium. It's one one thousandth the size of the uh, size of mitochondria, and it's one five millionth the size of a dot. And each one of those are doing things in your body this morning, producing energy and food and using that and making you who you are this morning making you who you can hear and who you can see and who you can worship God today. That's what's making you up. And I'm saying all that to say, that's don't even get into the eye and, and, and the wonderfulness of the eye that God made or the ears that He put on your head that you might hear that's almost like a little keyboard that plays the notes and can hear me speak and sing when we all get to heaven this morning. And it's doing its job in there. And I want you to think this morning, God made each and every one of those in you because God made you. And I could stand up today and I could look, look at me. Look at the wonderful work that God has done right here. Me. 
In the book of Psalms, 139, 14, Petey, put it up right quick. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well this morning. God made me, he made you this morning, guys. Each and every little part. I want you to think about that. We can build stuff, right? And we think that's good. But we're talking about it on a level so small that I can't even fathom that this morning. But each one of those things are making you this morning breathe and live and God's making each one of them work in you, right? We're fearful, fearful and wonderful. Man. Now, I want to get to the scripture that's been on my heart for a week. 16 says, come and hear. All ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. So we come this morning to see. I wanted this morning, I want you to come hear this morning. Use them ears God gave you this morning. And I, if you love God this morning, you're in the house of God, right? You're here. You love him, you fear him, you love him. And I will declare unto you this morning, my Savior, I will declare to you this morning. I thought about Joseph, uh, Gary, when you know, I was thinking he was sitting there at that time, how he could declare the good things in his life that God had done for him. I thought about Daniel when he's laying in the lion's den there. Uh, them lions, he's using them for a pillow as far as I'm concerned. But he's in the land of Babylon. He's over in the rock. He's not in the place he should be. But God used these people. These men were not where they should be. They weren't in their homeland. But God used them in the place that he'd put them. Now come in here this morning. I declare to you this morning that God's placed us in this earth. This ain't our home. Our home's in heaven with him. But we're here today. And I declare this morning that he's given me abundance and blessings. And it, I mean neighbors and friends and the church and people that love me. He's gave me all that. But this morning, all that's temporal. The greatest thing I want to declare this morning that he's given me is he saved my soul. He took me as a little nine-year-old boy. I was sitting over on the side of Freedom Church off the side, and I heard the word of God. I heard Jesus call my name, and he saved my soul. And that is the greatest thing he's ever done for me. That's permanent. That's not temporal. Now, here's the beauty of that day. Why am I declaring that today? Because he'll do it for you too. And he'll do it for somebody out there in video land. And he'll do it for somebody sitting in this house today. And he'll do it for somebody coming down the road today. He'll do it for that one you're going to meet this week. He'll do it again and again and again. He made us. He fearfully, wonderfully made us. But he made us to be saved. Let's get the sin out of our lives. And declare Jesus this morning. Now, don't that feel good? You got it off my chest. Come in here this morning. What Jesus will do for you. Right? Right? Right. Good group this morning. Good group. Y'all ready for... Y'all ready to uh, pray? Like this? You got prayer request? Children's Church. Bible school. Do you anything? Anything over here? Yes. Anything over there? Is anybody ready to pray? Here we go. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I can't thank you this morning enough. But the blessings, Lord, that you bestowed upon me, Father, just for this opportunity, Lord, to be now in your house. Lord, just an opportunity to worship you, Lord, and tell somebody about what you've done, the great things that you've done in my life. I pray, you, Lord, today that these young people, Lord, that uh, you'll get a hold of their hearts, Lord, and, and raise them got up into young people that know Christ as Savior. And, Lord, they might tell somebody else about Jesus, to proclaim Jesus, to declare Jesus in their life. I pray for a pastor. I pray, God, you'll bless him, encourage him, help him preach the Word of God, Lord, today. And, the, Lord, the message might get, Lord, to that one that needs desperately to hear about Jesus this very day. We're going to praise you for all the things you're going to do, things that you have done. We're going to ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
couple of places in the scripture this morning, the book of 2 Corinthians and also the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12. And we'll read some verses I'm trying to preach this morning uh, on the will of God, the will of God. And I was thinking, uh, this, is a, this is a subject uh, you couldn't hardly scratch the surface on, I don't think. But I believe this, and uh, I've been preached to this, and I believe the reason I have been, because uh, I believe the Bible would bear that out, that uh, as a Christian, a saved person, uh, God has a will uh, for our life. And on, give me that, if you will, a couple of things I had there. Let us exercise uh, of the, the greatest uh, the greatest care uh, unless we interpose anything between the will of God and ourself. Uh, unless we get anything in between. And the will of God for any life is the most important thing of, about our life. Uh, Brian mentioned our children's church. The greatest thing that has happened to him or to me or any other individuals getting saved. And then after we saved, uh, God's will in our life. Every exercise of the spirit, the body, and the mind reaches its lawfulest position only when it is motivated by the will of God, doing what God would have us to do. All of us could testify to that this morning, uh, particular situations in life, and I've had those, you have also, uh, where I was at the right place, I think, at the right time, and speaking the right words and doing the very thing that God would want me and have me to do. And what a wonderful feeling that is. What a wonderful feeling that is. God's will. Now, in my message this morning, I want to mention uh, several things and, and taken from the book of Romans chapter 12. Uh, God's will. And I thought about God's will just by way of introduction. And I want to praise God this morning. Our memory verse is 1 Timothy uh, chapter uh, 2, verse 4, for he would have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. And in the book of Peter, we read another verse where the Bible said, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, none should perish, but all should come to repentance. It's not God's will that any should perish. So we can uh, give the good news this morning that in, in listening this morning and however far this message goes, that we could say to every individual that would hear that, that it's God's will for everybody to be saved. Isn't that a blessing? God's will. That is God's will. And what a blessing that is. Praise the Lord. He don't want to leave anyone out. Isn't that wonderful? And I thank God for that. Uh, God's will. Now I'm thinking this morning, the will of God. And I thought about... Uh, uh, God's will, and sometimes we think, and in the book of Romans chapter 12, when we get to the message, we have a lot of practical things there that he teaches about doing that I believe that would be the part of God's will uh, for, for, that would, would, would be a, a, a blanket coverage, an umbrella that would all could get under some things we could do, and it mentions there the will of God. And then God has specific things that God's will for a person's life I was thinking about and just came to me while we were singing uh, about a man in my church, a former pastor, uh, and, and when I was pastoring in Yadkin County. And this, this was, he was such an unusual person. Uh, he and his wife both, I just had, uh, I mean, they were just unusual. He was not a preacher, but he did a lot of mission work. In fact, he volunteered and went uh, several months out of every year and did mission work out to uh, Texas and uh, New Mexico and other places, and then down into Mexico, the country of Mexico, and did mission work down there as a volunteer. And he's such an amazing person. But he was this, and when I tell what uh, the Lord laid on his heart, and I can't remember, uh, he had told me how long it took to do that, but it was a long time. But uh, years ago, the Lord laid on his heart to put a gospel tract on the door of every house in Yadkin County, the whole county. And he said he started out and he would uh, talk to people and he said he, you know, sometimes the conversation would be a little lengthy. He said he found out right off, if I do that in every house, I'll never live long enough to get around to every house in Yadkin County. But he had a map. He got a map of Yadkin County 
and he, he marked it off whenever he, the different roads and all the places that he went. And that map was quite worn uh, that he, he had. And I'm sure somebody in the family, no doubt, has, has, has kept that map. And then the gospel tracts he passed out uh, in every door in Yadkin County. I, I was pastoring there when he finished that task. And he said to me on one Sunday, and I can't remember what day of the week, but it was during that particular week. And he, he named the day, whether it was Thursday or Tuesday, whatever day it was. And he said, Preacher, did you hear anything? Did you hear a big shout uh, on that particular day? And he said, I finished up over in Jonesville. Jonesville is part of Yadkin County. And he said, I finished up over there, uh, the last door <laughs> and, and all the doors of Yadkin County. And whenever he put that last door, he said he had a pretty loud shout. And he didn't know how far it reached out, but I'm sure he did. But what a, what a task and the will of God for his life. I might add that this morning, that after he had finished that task and, and all the other work that he did, the mission work, uh, but that particular task, it wasn't long after that till the Lord called him home. He, he, and I don't know, I believe that he could have said along with the Apostle Paul uh, that I fought a good fight and I finished the course. And Paul said that. I believe there's a course for every individual and uh, what God's will is and what he might have. And I believe there's people that are walking in the will of God and I thank God for that. And many times we... Uh, let things interpose, get in between us and the will of God. And the will of God is the most important thing to, to think about and to, and to try to, uh, to do and to live in. It'd be the greatest accomplishment that anybody could think about in our life. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 1 and 2, and it said there, therefore seeing we have this ministry, we have renowned... Uh, received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness not handling the word of God deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God and then in the book of Romans chapter 12 some very familiar verses this morning uh, chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 and the apostle Paul said I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 said, Be not conformed to this world, but being you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that we're in the Lord's house. We rejoice this morning and how our hearts have been lifted and ministered to by song. And Lord, the words that's already been said, our opening, our class, our children's church, and good words have went out. Lord, it's touched our heart and, and it's ministered to us this morning. And we've been blessed. We've been blessed. We could leave now and we could say it certainly has been good to be in the Lord's house this morning. I pray you'd help us. The message go forth. May it touch hearts and find a resonating place. I pray for those that have never experienced salvation through the Lord Jesus that be saved for Christ's sake. Then I pray for us, everyone that's saved. Lord, may we uh, consider verse here so this morning, the will of God. May we desire that. May we, may we guard that, uh, Lord, uh, with, with our exercise of our body, our soul, our spirit, uh, that we would find the will of God. We'd walk therein. And as you would have us to be, may our steps be ordered by the Lord, we would pray and ask. And I thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to see my first three little points this morning. And uh, I was thinking about the will of God. What got it on my heart is reading in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And the Apostle Paul starts out there, I believe in verse 1. And he said he's an apostle by the will of God. It added greater authority to his apostleship because it was God's will for his life to be an apostle. And then he goes on in that first chapter, four times in that first chapter, he mentions the will of God. He mentioned in verse 1, I believe, and in verse 5 again, and maybe verse 9, 7, verse 11. Four different times, I can't remember the verses, but he talks about the will of God. And he talks about the mystery of his will. He talks about the good pleasure of his will. 
And he talks about the counsels of his will. I believe in, in before time, eternity past, we say sometimes that the counsel of God, the book of uh, Acts talks about that. In the determined counsels of God, God planned some things, amen. And I believe he planned salvation, don't you? He was as of a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, we're chosen in him before the foundation of the world. God had his plan, amen, of salvation. And then I like this morning our class, our teacher talking about seeing Jesus. You know, I was thinking, uh, we see Jesus, the the. The book stand that was built for me said, sir, we would see Jesus. I've seen that thing this week, uh, every day this week. In fact, going to the basement, I've got it down there where I can see it. And said, sir, we would see Jesus today. And I thought about it. I'm in the class and I'm rejoicing. I said, praise God, I'm already seeing Jesus. Amen. Our teacher said, Joseph is like Jesus. And so he is in the lesson that we had this morning. And he was talking about Jesus. And then he said, God has a plan. God had a plan for Joseph, his life, and the will of his life. In fact, Joseph said that to his brothers. You remember that? Uh, they, and he said, you know, they felt bad. They, they thought they were going to, uh, they thought he was going to come down on them. That's what they thought. I mean, they thought they was in big trouble. And they were feeling guilty. They knew what they'd done. And he said something comforting to him. I like that our lesson said, and he said, don't be angry with yourself. Isn't that a blessing? And they was the ones that threw him in the pit. They was the ones that got him out of the pit and sold him as a slave. And here he's saying to them, now don't be hard, don't be down on yourself, don't be angry on yourself. But because he said God had a plan. And you know, you think about the life of Joseph and you say, well, I thought he was going to preach a man. I may just preach on the life of Joseph. I'm thinking, excited about, it. isn't that a blessing? What, you know, that he, and he said it was all in God's plan. You know, we think we have the wrong uh, philosophy of, about Christianity, don't we? We have these health and wealth preachers. You know, you'll never be sick and you'll always be rich and everything's good going to happen. Well, I've lived this many years and I've had a lot of things that wasn't good to happen. And I've had some things that bothered me terribly. <laughs> and I've had some depressed days. I know I had a preacher friend of mine say he's in the preacher's fellowship. Said there's a preacher got up and said I ain't had a discouraged day since I've been saved. And he said he got up and preached behind him. And he said he got to counting maybe how many times he'd been discouraged in every day. And he figured how many years that he had been saved. And it was thousands and thousands of times he had been discouraged. Right after a guy said he had never been discouraged. You know. <laughs> well that'd be a conflict in meeting wouldn't it? But you know, sometimes we think, you know, if it's not good and everything going smooth, that we just way yonder out. We, we think God's done left us. We're not in the will of God. What about Joseph? He said, God sent me down here to preserve life. Well, he didn't start out in the palace, did he? Boy, that's a rough road till he got there. Amen. But he said, God had, a, he had a will. He had a plan. So we just need to look. I'm thinking about God's will for our life. And I need to get in the message, I think, uh, get started. I'm just having a good time. You know, uh, everybody all right so far? Uh, <laughs> the will of God. And I was excited to think. Wouldn't that be a blessing? I don't know. God has particular things here. I was thinking, though, as, as I'm listening to the singing, you know, I came up here, there's, there's such an abundance of talents. Everybody up here can sing. I feel like a, a, a square in a round hole or wherever I'm at. I don't know. You know, I, so I'm, I'm, I live congregation singing. It just makes me feel like I can sing when I sing with y'all. Amen. So I'm, I'm happy, but I'm looking around and I'm rejoicing and I see excitement and joy on the faces and we're singing when we all get to heaven. And I say one thing, it sounds good too. It sounds real good. It always sounds better when people can sing. But some of us that can't sing, you say, what's our verse? We're making a joyful noise. And sometimes it ain't much more than a noise, but praise God, if we can keep it joyful, we'll be all right, won't we? Amen. So the will of God, I'm thinking in the book of Romans chapter 12, and I'll look this morning, I'm thinking about the will of God. God has a will. And in this chapter here, chapter 12, as we go on in this, this uh, 
Uh, let me give you my first uh, thoughts, the first three, the message, the ministry, and the mystery, the will of God. God has a will, I believe, for every life. You and I that are saved to declare the message. It may not be the huge task of putting the gospel track on every door of a county. Wasn't that something? How big was that? I don't even know the population of Yadkin County, but uh, land, in fact, Wilkes is more land uh, territory. And is Wilkes the biggest county in the state? I believe it is. Land-wise, I'm talking about. It's, it's number two. Okay. What's the biggest? Uh Anyway, I thought all the time that Wilson was the biggest. I've thought that all my life. But anyway, we're pretty big anyhow. But Yankin's pretty big too when you go to every door, put it on there. What a task. But I'm saying this morning, I thank God he came into the world to save sinners, didn't he? And he said, preach the gospel to every creature. You said, what's the will of God for, for sure, preacher? Do you know for everybody that's saved? And that's number one is the message to get the message out. I like what I heard Brother Neil Wilcox say one time. He came here and preached in our church, and I'd heard him preach that message before, a great message. He was the director of Winston-Salem Rescue Mission for 33 years. And he said that it was God's providence for me to be there for 33 years, but he said it was my privilege. That's the way to look at ministry, ain't it? And he came and preached the message here, what happens to you matters to me. But he said this once in his message that he was preaching, and he said, I want to be a part of getting out the Word of God. I want to be a part of that. Amen. The message. And I say this morning, thank God, uh, same yesterday and day forever, in our, in our Sundays, in our opening this morning, the verse that was given, book of Hebrews, the message is not changed. Jesus saves, amen. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saved. The message is still the same this morning and it'll continue to be the same. So we're getting the message out, the word of God and how important that is. And then we have a ministry. In the second Corinthians chapter four, the verse I read, he said, we've, had a, we've got a ministry because that we've received mercy, amen. Every one of us that have enjoyed the salvation through the Lord Jesus and through his mercy that are saved, we have, he's given us a ministry. And then I like my last point this morning, the mystery. You say, what's the mystery? Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 15, the great resurrection chapter. Behold, I show you a mystery. We're not going to all sleep, but all be changed in a moment, twinkle of an eye. You say, he's given us a message to carry out, and he's given us a ministry, but praise God, he keeps us churning and in, encouraged and motivated because we got a mystery to look forward to. Jesus is coming back. So the will of God in the book of Romans chapter 12, and I'll just mention some things here. It says in chapter 12 in the book of Romans, that there's many, many, there's many members. And all of us are members of the body of Christ. And we have a ministry. And each one has its own particular ministry of whatever God was leading. But then there's a common ministry of the will of God, I believe, for, for all of us together. But in the book of Romans, it says, not everyone has the same office. Not everyone does the same thing. And we ought to respect and, and, uh, and encourage each and every one for whatever the, the ministry and the office that God has in place them in. Amen. And it goes on in these, in these verses here in this chapter and it lists some things that I believe is a part of the will of God. And it said that we ministering, ministering to people. You know, Jesus himself said that, that he came not to be ministered to, but to minister. Amen. And that involves a lot of things. It involves teaching the will of God. God gifts some people for teaching. And what a blessing that is. And we ought to thank God, and I've mentioned that before, but I'll reiterate it again. We ought to thank God here at Bethany for a small church. We have, we have several people that are gifted for teaching and that can teach the Scriptures. Amen. Bless our heart. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. You know, there are places where, and there are places where I've, I've visited and preached in places where they had, they, oh, I've, I've been, I pastored a church where they didn't even have a piano to play. And I've been in churches where they didn't have nobody to lead the music, just somebody to lead it. 
And sometimes it'd be somebody couldn't sing theirself, but they did the best they could. But it, you know, isn't it a blessing? What a blessing, teaching. And then for exhortation, I looked up that word exhort. That's a special word right there. Exhort means to encourage or to challenge. When I was going to school in 1975, Preacher Lackey, one of our professors, and he was in his 60s then, and I don't know how many years it went back, and I've never heard anybody say that but him, and I don't know where it was just particularly for that area or not, but he told us there in class one night, he said years ago they had what they call exhorters. And I don't know if any of y'all know about that or ever seen it. I've never seen it, but I, and I never heard about it from nobody but him. But he said the preacher would preach the message. And then after the message was finished, the exhorter would come forward and he would exhort the people and encourage the people and challenge the people to act upon what they'd heard. Isn't that some, exhortation? Maybe that's where they got that ministry from, exhortation. I want to thank God. I believe there's people walking in the will of God that they've got the gift of exhortation. You ever been around somebody that whenever you was around them, it just made you feel a whole lot better and helped you. And you was encouraged. And you was challenged. And you wanted to press on, amen. And a motivation, amen. I like to be around somebody. Like Preacher uh, Barker, one of my former pastors, he used to tell me, he said, Brother Rogers, you try to get around somebody that's more spiritual than you are where they lift you up. Well, I don't have no problem with that. I know a lot of people more spiritual than me. I mean, I just got plenty of them I can get around, lift me up. But that's some good advice, wasn't it? You get around somebody that's holding that bitterness and whatever like our class was and they're down on everything, they ain't going to help you much, are they? I remember one day, Preacher Michael was one of my mentors and he just talked to me like he owned me and I loved him because he'd tell me straight. One day he came by and I was just down on everything, complaining and grumbling. And he used to, he had this, he'd look at you and blare his eyes at you. And he looked at me that day and he blared his eyes. And he said, I'm leaving you. You're going to kill all the joy I've got. And he just turned around and left me just abruptly like that. Now that'll put you to thinking, won't it? I said, I'm in the wrong frame of mind. <laughs> Not only am I in the wrong frame of mind, I talked to the wrong person, amen. God's good, ain't he? So we see exhortation, then the ministry of giving. I mentioned about the fellow put a gospel track on every door in Yadkin County. But he also was a wealthy person. You'd never know it by meeting him. But he, he gave. I'd heard one time about him, his, his giving. Some missionary had come by and needed uh, money to do a certain project and he's able to just finance the whole thing. I mean, to give. He was, he was a giver and, and interested in seeing people say giving and then showing mercy, showing mercy. That's a wonderful gift, isn't it? Showing mercy. That's uh, the will of God, showing mercy. Now it says in those verses there, if I'm not mistaken, where it talks about showing mercy, to do it with cheerfulness. You know, sometimes whenever you're showing mercy, if you're not careful, you won't. You you maybe get the wrong edge. Some of the charitable organizations and things that we do in in ministry, uh, charitable things that we do, you know, there are those that'll beat the system and all that. If you're not careful, you get the wrong attitude. But if you've got the right attitude and you do it in the right way, God will bless you for it. Amen. Somebody said, I give this or that or that, and I don't know, you know what they might have done. They might have misused and, and all those things. But exhortation, he that giveth, if of simplicity, he that ruleth. And he that showeth mercy, there it is, with cheerfulness. <laughs> Amen. Boy, that'll help out the will of God, want a little cheerfulness along the way. And it makes the person feel good that you're showing the mercy to. You say, I want to thank you for helping me. And they said, it was my pleasure. I'm glad that God enabled me because there's the giver. God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Cheerfulness. Showing mercy. Then he goes on in this verse. He's talking about the will of God. And he said brotherly love. Jesus said, John 13, that, men, that all men may know that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. Isn't that a blessing? the fellowship and the bond you have between Christian people. And that's what makes a church go forward, amen, in, 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 in the fellowship 
that it won't be broken. You know, I, I tell you, within a church family, there's, there's a conflict sometimes just out of personalities. I had a preacher friend of mine, and he had a fellow in his church, and the preacher told me, said, our personalities are just exactly opposite. We're just so far away in personality. And the fellow never could just have a good fellowship with the preacher. He just, but God worked something out one day. That fellow's daughter got away from God and got in trouble and the preacher was able to recover in love and mercy. But it changed that fellow's attitude even though the personality was a long ways off. Sometimes you have to work on things. Amen? <laughs> Brother Love. And then fervent in spirit. Some fervencies. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man developed much. Charles Spurgeon used to say this. This is one of the characteristics he looked for in young preachers. He had a preacher's college. And one of the big things I'd read that he put a lot of emphasis on was, was their, their earnestness. Fervent in spirit. Had a preacher in our church that I grew up in. He preached a sermon one Sunday morning. Red hot prayers. Fervent in spirit. Amen. Had a friend of mine went to a church and he said, I don't know if I'm going back there. I said, I don't. He said, the preacher act like he didn't even care his self. Forever in spirit, amen. We're not here to spin our wheels in the sand, are we, preacher? This is important this morning, ain't it? And as God began to speak to me about that in, in my reading in the book of Ephesians and four times in one chapter, he talked about the will of God. And I thought, boy, the will of God's important, ain't it? And it's the most important thing that I can consider after I've been saved is God's will. Lord, what would you have me to do? Well, now what the Apostle Paul asked Jesus when he got saved on the road to Damascus in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, and he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Amen. That was his, that was his question after God saved him. What would you have me to do? Amen. Forever in spirit, then serving the Lord. You're in the book of Psalm chapter 100. It says, serve the Lord of gladness, amen. Come before his presence, praise God with singing, amen. Know you that the Lord, he is God, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and sheep of his pastor. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. I like that children's church. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that a blessing? And this the human body and the cells and still marvels and they're still studying that. You know, you go to the doctor, doctors are practicing medicine. Did you know that? They ain't got there yet. They're still practicing. I remember my doctor used to tell me this, and he'd tell me about different things. And he, he was just, not, he was an honest doctor. But he, he used to tell me things and that uh, he said, this is what they say for now. <laughs> and the reason he said it that way, because the next time you visit him, your appointment, the, 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 the ones that know everything, they may have done changed their mind on it by then. And we've had the biggest flip-flopper that's ever been in Washington that could ever live, that little fella. He's been a thousand ways on the COVID deal. And uh, I wouldn't believe a word he said. But anyway, I've just injected that in there where we're at. Forever in spirit. Instant in prayer. And then it said, I didn't have that on my outline, but one of them said, distributing to the necessity of the saints. Book of Galatians 6 and 10. Give us that verse. I've always loved that verse. As we have there our full opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them of the household of faith. Used to have another fellow in my church, and he every day seemed like that was the thing, the impression I got from him. He was disabled. He, he, he worked on a long time after the doctors told him, you need to quit. So he finally was just forced to quit, but he could still get around. And he would every day, he'd try to figure out something he could do good. He just, he took that verse serious. Doing good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. Then we go back to our outline. Distributing to the necessary of saints. And then it said, be answered in prayer. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? The will of God. And given to hospitality. That's one of the things that I've been impressed about the old saints of God in visiting through the years. You know, you visit a, an older person, you say, what are they going to do? They want to give you something before you leave. <laughs> I mean, they want to give you something to eat 
Oh, they won't give you some. I used to deliver when I deliver oil, and I go in some of the uh, our older customers. They, they they paid for the oil, and they'd be writing their check out. And uh, I remember one lady in particular. She's in heaven now, but she'd she'd give me an apple or something. She just won't give me something before I leave every time. And you say, reckon where she got that from? She might have been reading Book of Romans chapter twelve someday, and just said, "Give them the hospitality. I just want to do something for somebody." You say, "Well, that's just a little thing." Well, it might have been pretty little, but I'm still remembering it this morning while I'm preaching about just giving me an apple. I want to give you something. I was delivering oil to the other lady one day, but I, I got that. I, I more or less asked for that after I tell the story you'll see. Uh, but I looked on the table, and she had something on there. My mama used to make sweet bread. Anybody in all the world remember sweet bread? Anybody know anything? Ain't nobody know anything about sweet bread. Sweet bread. It was kind of like, a, I don't know how she made it, but it's kind of like a sheet cake. But I went and delivered these right in the check. I looked on the table and I spotted it. And I said, is that sweet bread? I said, my mama used to make sweet bread. And the lady said, yeah, that's sweet bread. And so she said, I made some and I, I've got some in the freezer. I make more than we can eat. And so she went and got me some, brought out a freezer. You know, I kind of, you know, got that gift to myself. But anyway, and then she gave me some blackberries they'd picked. She had frozen along with it. And I'd go rejoice and pray, praise God. Then whenever I got hurt and couldn't work no more, she called me on the phone. Want to know how you're doing. Now I just delivered all to somebody like that. You say, what about people like that? Just giving to hospitality. You say, well, that's not a big thing. Well, it must have been or God wouldn't have put it in the book. It must be a pretty big thing, ain't it? Just given to hospitality. You just see somebody, I'll just do something good for somebody. Amen. Beverly's got a whole lot more of that than I have. I never had a leather coat in all my life. And I wanted a leather coat. And it was just the oddest thing in all the world. And all of a sudden, I had three give to me, three leather coats. And Beverly said, you got three. You got to give one of them away. And I said, where's that at in the Bible? <laughs> so I looked for people that was either skinnier or bigger than I was, you know, that I could give it to. <laughs> you figured that out, didn't you? God's good, ain't he? Giving the hospitality. The will of God. But I hope this morning, as I was reading the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, it talked about the will of God. And it just came impressed on my heart again. You said, you ought to know that a long time ago. Sure, I've been preached to about the will of God. No doubt I preached it myself, the will of God. But this week it just came. You ever heard that expression, came home to me? It just got heavy on my heart. And I said, Lord, I want you to help me. And I'm trying to pray. I said, Lord, this day that I'm living in, what, there may be some things or whatever that would be your will for me today. I need to be trying to do that. We need to be trying to do that. Amen. And we know this morning in our own personal experience, and I believe I know other Christians, and I'm not just looking at someone else, but it's sad to say this morning, I believe we have a lot of Christians in America that have got now the will of God, don't you? But we would pray maybe this message and other messages and the Lord to speak to their heart and to come back to the will of God, God's will for our life. I hope it's impressed on you somewhat. You know, here's the thing about preaching or teaching, and I believe every teacher here could probably raise their hand to that. They probably learn more than any of us students do listen at them. Amen. It helps them more than it does anybody else. Usually the message does that. But it's heavy on my heart, God's will. Wouldn't it be a blessing when we finish the course? We could look back and say, Lord, I believe I finished the course. There were some things that I believe was your will for my life. And I, under your help and submitting to you, I tried to do those things. And I want to look back and say, Lord, 
Wasn't that such a tremendous statement? The Apostle Paul said, I'm ready to depart now. My departure is at hand, he said, and I fought a good fight. And I finished the course. God's will. I believe I've known people that finished the course. And God's will was what was important to them in their life, what God would have me to do. Nothing greater than that this morning that we could ever accomplish in life. As I said, my friend, he accomplished some great things in life as far as he, 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 was, he was wealthy, really. And he told me one day, he said, I have people tell me that I'm rich. But that wasn't the thing that consumed him. But what it was, you'd never know it when you met him. But he wanted to do the will of God for his life, God's will. Let's stand this morning and pray. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Who would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to praise you for that. There's not a person on the face of the earth but what you want them to be saved. And that you sent your son Jesus and gave him for all the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I pray, Lord, as the message goes forth, Maybe there's somebody never trusted the Lord. They'd be saved for Christ's sake. Maybe there's some that have gotten out of the will of God. It's, it's not a priority in their mind and in their heart of what God wants for their life. They've just took it in their own hand and they're living life the way that it pleases them. And I pray you'd help. We as Christians... It'll be worth it all when we come down to the end of the way if we can reflect back and say, I finished the course. Lord, I pray you'd help me. I pray you'd help me. Maybe the message was, number one, to stir my heart, God's will. Help us to be happy and content with the will of God. I pray you'd help us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'm thinking this morning, and I feel like maybe sharing this, Preacher Donnie, and in my thinking, and we're so blessed to have him as a preacher in our county. And he, he came by the house and he went up there at Bojangles and brought chicken and all the sides that they had. And uh, But he called me and told me early in the week and he said, I want to do something. He said, I'm going to come by on Friday if that's all right. But the day he came by, uh, I I wasn't, uh, you know, thinking in the right way of thinking some thoughts, you know. I was just wore out and we was, you know, some difficult time I thought. But he came by and he hadn't shared it with his church then. That Friday he came by, he was going to tell his church that coming Sunday of the diagnosis he had. But he said this. He said, I've got peace. And he said, I want God's will. Now that's easy to say when they just have to give you a raise down there on the job. I can rear back and say, praise God, I want God's will. But when you get a diagnosis and you're facing surgery, you don't know the outcome. But you say, I'm just at peace. That's a different ball game. God's will. I want a smooth road, don't you? <laughs> I say I mean, I'd rather have a smooth road. <laughs> but God's, God's will. Amen. It sure helped me to get things collected and back on track a little bit. It was a word fitly smoke. God's good, ain't he? I did what Preacher Barker told. Get around somebody more spiritual than you are. That happy. <laughs> Ain't God good? There's not a one of us will be sorry when we get to the end of the way if we have done God's will. And if some of them already went past us, they're up there on the street of gold and they're rejoicing because they've done God's will. And look how it's influenced you and I this morning of doing God's will. And I'm feeling good in the Lord. Amen. I heard one preacher preaching and he said, I've got a lot of time. I've got plenty of time, but y'all ain't. So we need to go to God's good. Amen. Amen. I'm just happy in the Lord. Pray for us, Debbie. Amen.